Well, these are going to be some notes on the experiment number seven for nanoparticles. Um, and uh, it looks like I've got a couple of me on screen here, but we'll fix that in a minute. So uh, the first thing you know I have to know about this experiment, and I've got my procedure down here, I'm reading along, is uh, during uh, week, the first lab period. So you're going to make three Petri dishes with mung beans in them and three of the solutions. You're going to be, uh, now I'm on uh, part four, page one, part Roman numeral four, number three. It says because the entire experiment will take uh, about 500 milliliters of each type of solution, prepare 500 milliliters, uh, and you have a, let's see, what size beakers do you have? You have a liter beaker, and you have a 500 milliliter beaker, and so you're going to prepare one of your solutions in each of these. Each solution will still only be 500 milliliters. Now, uh, it says to do, um, to calculate how much you will need to make a 20 part per million solution. It turns out that you need less than one drop, which is not possible. So you're going to use one of your pipettes, not your calibrated pipette one of the other ones, and you're going to get one drop of the zinc oxide nanoparticles and put it into one of those beakers, and then you're going to get uh, one drop of the other one and put it in the other beaker, being careful that they don't mix. Um, so you can use different pipettes, or you can use um, rinse one, but condition it more than three times until you cannot see any of those particles down there. So, um, and then you're going to be doing this. So first, uh, you're going to have some of the water in there. Then you're going to put your drop in. Uh, I would imagine you'll have something like uh, 50 milliliters of water. That way, when you put your drop in, it won't stick to the plastic right away. You're going to weigh the water um, in it. Well, let's say this. You need the mass of the drop. And it might only be 0 0.05, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, somewhere around there, grams. But we need the mass of that drop because we need to know what is the mass of nanoparticle solution you're putting in there. Um, actually, that will work. Yeah. Uh, so one drop, um, since it's 20%, um, if you get 0 0.05 grams, and 20% of that would be 0.01 grams. That is actually going to be very close to 20 parts per million. So that'll actually work well. Uh, see me for help or email me if you have any trouble with those calculations. I just thought of that. All right. Um, so now you've got an idea of how to make your solution. So, so you put in your 50 or so milliliters. You put in your drop that you weigh. You know that drop. And then you're going to fill it up to 500 here. And then you're going to take a spoon or something and mix it just like it says. You'll do the other one. Again, put some water in, say 50 or 100 mil 50 milliliters so you don't uh, max out your scale. Put in one drop, fill it up to five. Well, let's go to 450 here. I think let's hope 450 is enough. And then mix it. Then you've got your two solutions. Your third solution is just water. The purest water you can get, but tap water is fine and make sure you keep track of what you've got. All right, so uh, then you're gonna pour each of the nanoparticle solutions or distilled water into the appropriate Petri dish uh, so that the mung beans are completely covered but not so filled that you're gonna spill uh, when you move them because you will have to move them. Actually, you may not have to move them, but still, don't fill it too much. All right, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to demonstrate how to do um, the um, uh, procedure with image J. So I've got image J right here. I've opened it, so I've already downloaded it. I've got it on my computer. Uh, and then I'm going to open up the file day eight nano group four, which is right next to the handout uh, where you downloaded that. So I'm gonna uh, open, my computer is a little slow, but oh, there it goes, you can see the progress bar. Here it comes. And I'll move the 
this up a little bit. Actually, I don't even think I have to share my screen. Yeah, because I'm already just taking a picture of my screen now. Uh, all right. So um, what we need is... Um, oh, I'm not right there. There we go. So what we need to do is, according to the procedure, you want to zoom in on a part of the ruler such that one centimeter takes up at least half the screen. To do that, I'm going to go to my zoom tool or my magnifying glass. I'm going to go to my magnifying glass. There we go. I'm going to come over to my ruler and I'm going to hit the plus button. And it's going to zoom in on the plus part. There we go. And I need it to take up at least half the screen. One more time. That's good. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, straight line tool. And I'm going to go and I'm going to go straight from the middle of one of these marks on my ruler. Oop. Not that one. I'm going to click and pull, click and hold. I'm going to come down here to the middle of this one. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on image J. I'm going to go to analyze and I'm going to go to set scale. And when I go to set scale, uh, my known distance, I'm going to fill in one centimeter, one, just one. And my units are going to be centimeters. And I'm going to click global here. Uh, that way this scale is for all files, although you only have one file today. Click OK. That said that 227 point something pixels is one centimeter. Now following along, uh, oh, we've already done number four, set scale, choose analyze set scale, number five. Now number of pixels for your line will appear in the distance pixels. All right. And we hit return there. Now we're going to zoom out. So I'm going to go back to the magnifying tool. I'm going to hit the minus. And uh, now I'm going to use the segmented line tool. So for mine, I'm going to right click here on the line segment. Let's say, there we go. Right click, and now I'm going to go to segmented line. And now I am going to trace the line for each of these. And I'm going to, so I have one right here. I've got another curling around. I've got a third. I've got a fourth, which is a shorty over here, but I'm still going to trace that. And I've got a fifth right here. And I'm just going to do, oh, how about we start here? So you're going to start where that little point connects. I'm going to just click once. Well, uh, there we go, once. It's going to set a spot. My computer's going very slow, but there we go. There's another one. And each time you click, and see, it's going to, be hard to see here but this goes behind this over to here and I'm doing my best to approximate this and I'm trying to go right down the center and all you're going to do is you're going to keep drawing this segmented line until you get to the end doing your best to get it all along the center there. If you make a tiny mistake, it's okay. Oop. I messed up there, so I'm going to hit the delete key. It did not delete, but I'm just going to keep going. Make smaller segments as I get around this curve here. And you just keep going, and then when you get to the very end, You double click and that tells you to the computer to let it go that that's the end of your line segment and now I'm going to go to click up here on this modal menu I'm going to analyze I'm going to measure and when I do that 
it's going to tell me for my first one, don't worry about the area or the mean. So you're going to worry about the length. Remember, your length has been calibrated to be in centimeters now. So your first data point in table, so page four, table one, uh, bean one, and it doesn't matter which bean's which, just as long as you keep track, I got 10.566 centimeters. And in that table one, it's also going to ask you for your conversion. And mine is 227 point, well, let's see if we can go back. Uh, let's um, come back here. We'll clear this line out. I forgot to write it down, so I'm going to go back to analyze. I'm going to go back to set scale. Oh, there it is. My 227.0022. That goes in that conversion, 227.0022 pixels equal one centimeter. What's that line doing there? I don't like that line. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm with the wrong tool. So I'm going to come back to which tool? Just a magnifying one. And I don't know how to get rid of that line. Here, come back to segment. When you click it once, the last line goes away. Now it tries to create another one. Now I click it once, that line goes away and I'm ready to start my new line. So, and that's what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be taking pictures. Let's see if I can close this out now. I don't need to save that. I don't need to save that. Don't save. You're going to be taking pictures every day. Um, and one, uh, one thing I can tell you is it can help you to get some sort of system so that you can reposition your phone. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to take an old yogurt container and a yogurt container because it's uh, like a, uh, we use them as Tupperware around our houses. So we have a number of them. And it's big enough so that it fits over the Petri dish. And then you can cut a hole of, out of it and place your phone on top. And what that does is then you can place the, the yogurt container over your Petri dish. You can place your phone on the yogurt container and it will give you a reproducible height to take your pictures um, each day. And we're gonna be taking pictures each day. We're gonna be analyzing them just like you saw so for each picture, you're going to be uh, re, you're going to have the ruler in the picture. That ruler will tell you your pixel scale. And uh, our goal for this lab is to show you how mung beans grow under conditions with different numbers of, uh, or different concentrations or different, same concentrations, but different nanoparticles. And hopefully you will learn a lot. This is data for the water and for the zinc oxide that has been done before, but data for your unknown type of nanoparticle has not been done before. Give it a shot. Let me know if you have any questions.